Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jimmy and today we will be doing the top five best brand new features on Samsung One UI 7.0 beta. Now, yesterday's video was showing everything that is brand new, and this one will be the top five best features. Now, there is actually one feature that I forgot to put in yesterday's video, but that is actually ranked number one here today. How I missed it, I have no idea. It was written on the sheet to talk about, but my eye skipped over. Now, this will be a regular traditional top five video, which means the number five, which is the first one that we'll cover, is good going all the way up to best in that order. So starting this video off with number five, that is the look, the feel, the refresh, the experience of One UI 7. We have the updated version of the lock screen. We also have updated application icons. So you have your camera icon, the gallery icon. Here's the calculator, the calendar, the clock your device care, everything has been updated there. Yes, we do have all of the animations turned on. So this is basically at 1x. Now, normally I always put it at 0.5 just because I don't need all of the flair when it comes down to all the animations and transitions. I just want to kind of just move around, you know, wherever I'd want to go when it comes down to all of these applications and such. But it looks really good. This is what it looks like with all of the animations going in and out of pretty much everything. And also the refresh of the quick settings. There's a lot of things you can do with that, which we'll actually talk about about here in just a second. So this is what we're looking at when it comes down to the animations and look, the feel, and just the updated experience. Number four that made the list is the quick settings and how you're able to interact with it and everything that you're able to do. So this has been completely updated. You are able to use the old version of swiping down anywhere where first off it pulls down your notifications and then it comes into the quick settings. You are able to go with whatever happens with stock by going to that panel settings, notifications and quick settings, you can make them separate. So this is actually what it looks like uh, when you actually get it out of the box. Anywhere you swipe down, this will be your notifications. doesn't matter where you are. The only way that you can get to your quick settings is by swiping down over where that battery icon is. So if you want to get to the quick settings, you have to go right up over there. But if you do want to have the older style of this, again, all you'd have to do, because you can't swipe down twice to get inside of there, swipe down over where the battery is. This is where you go to that panel settings, notifications and everything. You're able to make them go together. So if you are used to this and you just find it to be more useful and helpful, which I do, because then I can just be anywhere in the phone. I'm able to swipe down once or twice and it gives me everything that I'm looking for. Then you're able to do that. Also, when it comes down to the quick settings, not only do you just have your brightness bar, so this is where you can change the brightness, but you also have the option to switch it over from light mode and dark mode. So right now, this is light mode. If I go inside of my settings, so if I was to pull this thing down, it's going to be white. Now, again, if I pull this down, I tap there, that's going to be now dark mode. I can also tap this right here uh, for my volume. So now they added in the volume up here too. So this is silent, that is sound, and this is vibrate. And then this is the volume of sound. So if I wanted to listen to music, I basically swipe this anywhere and everywhere, and it's going to put it at that volume level. So it's very nice that you're able to have all of these tools just sitting right in front of you, brightness and volume, and also changing if you're in vibrant sound as well as mute. And you can also switch it from light mode and dark mode. Now, not only that, but now you'd also be able to fully customize it and drag and drop wherever you want these things to go. So originally, I believe this one was actually up over here. This one was, you know, all the way towards the bottom. And this one was maybe right there. I believe this is maybe how it was when it first came out, but I'm going to leave the internet and the Bluetooth on the very top. I want to have my volume pretty much all the way down because it's where I can change the volume and the brightness and what mode my sound is in. This one right here, smart things and the smart view, I don't use it as much. So I'm gonna bring it up there, which means when I use this, my thumb is actually a little bit closer to all of these quick settings. Now what's cool about this whole customization thing is that you can bring this down here if you want to, you can bring that up there, wherever you want these things to be set up, you can. So you can actually get your thumb even closer to those quick settings. And don't forget, you can swipe down so you can fully expand all of your quick settings that would have normally been on the very top. So they're all sitting right here. And then when you are done, you'd be able to just swipe this right back up and then it shrinks back down to where it was. So there's so much going on with the quick settings and I know it's only just quick settings, but because there were so many different changes and so many things that you can actually do and all the functionalities and all the customizations, it had to be on this list in the top five. Number three on this list is the expanded folders. Now I know that that doesn't sound like a huge deal, but it actually is when you start using it. If you're one of those people like me who has always used folders on every single phone that I can remember for probably the past decade, I 
always create all these different categories. I put them into different folders. So here's all of my tools. I also have all of my smart home stuff. Here's all of my finance and mining and crypto and all that good stuff. Here's all the YouTube stuff. And so pretty much what happens is when you expand a folder, they get larger and you're able to interact with it immediately. So if I tap on Twitter, it's going to go directly into Twitter. Here is Instagram. It's going to go directly inside of there. Here's going to be, a, what is that? Threads. It goes inside of that. When it comes down to YouTube and when it comes down to all the other folders, they are all there and categorized and in a folder, but I have to open it, expand it, and then I'm able to actually get into the application. So again, if I want to go into any of these applications, I expand it and then I get it opened. So when it comes to this one, I just simply tap on the icons and it is large enough for you to actually tap any of these and be accurate when it comes down to what you are opening. Now, how you get this one all set up is that first off, I'm just going to press on this one and I'm going to shrink it. So now it's going to be right back to where it was from before. I have to expand it in order for me to actually get into an application. So put it into an area that you know that you're able to expand it and make it a little bit larger. So I'm just going to have this one either up there. I can even put it down over here. When you press and hold on the folder you want to enlarge, you just tap on enlarge and now it's been enlarged. And you can even see some of the animation that happens when you get these things shrunk and enlarged. It kind of does like a little pop right over here. And it also looks really good when you put your phone into landscape mode. So now that's in landscape mode, you have all of your icons over here on the right hand side. You have your bigger folders, your bigger widgets, the smaller widgets, and then the other folders itself. So really it all kind of just meshes in and looks really good even when you rotate it. Now in the older versions of One UI, it actually looks very ugly. It just kind of actually keeps everything in place, but this one actually formats it to actually look really good when it comes down to the user interface, if you use it vertically or horizontally. So yes, the enlarging of these folders is gonna be number three. You'd also be able to tap there to get it expanded if there's more applications you wanna take a look at. So this one actually has a lot. This is my everyday folder. It has a ton of applications. What shows on the front that you're able to tap and interact with is with the first eight applications. When you tap on that more option, you're gonna see everything. So you can see here that there are 16 applications in here because there's eight there and then eight here. So whatever you have on your top two lines up over here, because mine's set up basically four by four with this folder, whatever is up in these areas is gonna show up immediately. Now let's say that maybe I move this one on down, Discord moves over. So now what's gonna happen is Discord is gonna be the option that I can open up right there. So however you want yours to be set up, where you're able to interact with all of them, just make sure that the first eight is towards the very top. Number two on this list is writing assist. And I've used this so many different times today. I used it with emails going back to companies, I believe twice. I did it with a few different text messages. I also used it to create the title of this video that we're shooting right now. And now I'm gonna show you how you can get it done even inside of let's say YouTube Studio. Now there's several different tools you can use. So for this one, what I'm gonna do is take a look at my description on the very top. Now, what you can do is if you press and hold and you just highlight any area, again, super simple to do in any application, you have your writing assist icon right there. And then you can just do spelling and grammar, writing style, your summarize or bullet point. If I do just spelling and grammar, very simple things, what it's going to do is actually highlight and underline, I should say, what it is actually changing with this little replace option. So this one has been corrected to make it look a little bit better, adding in a few words, um, taking off some of my capital letters that I use all the time. I can hit on replace and now it's been replaced and it looks better. Also what you can do is let's take a look at my timestamps. Now here is something that I didn't know I did and somehow Galaxy AI or the writing assist was able to figure it out. When I created this video here, all of these timestamps, they're actually in categories. And I didn't even know that I did that, but AI picked it up. So I can do spelling and grammar, or I can do writing style, I can summarize it or bullet point it. So if I do bullet point, which what I'll do is I'll actually take whatever it gives me here, and then I'm gonna save it into this video and this is what it's gonna you know show. So this is what it came out with. And so with this one, it's putting it into categories. So here's interface and home screen changes. And right there, you can see that it is actually in interface and home screen changes. This right here is the original, and you can actually see uh, a lot of the stuff that, that, that they changed. So they're actually putting in commas and everything else that I didn't do from before. It's adding in a few different words, using better words, lock screen writing and gallery updates. You have those three different timestamps, camera and battery enhancements. You have those timestamps, uh, system app updates, call transcript, updated alarms, updated calendar and features. So I think that this is actually really cool 
So with this one, I can actually just hit on replace. And now this is going to be a part of my YouTube video when it goes into, you know, if you take a look at my description. So taking a look at this, all I'd have to do here is kind of delete this. Don't really think that I need to have that there. Uh, and then when you're all deleted there and you hit on save, the nice thing is that when you go inside back into here and I take a look at my description again, it's going to look exactly like the way that we just got done having it. So here's all the timestamps all together in their own little categories. Uh, YouTube Studio sometimes have little glitches and bugs, so now I'm able to actually get it all deleted. So now you'd be able to see here's the categories, here's the timestamps, categories, timestamps, categories, timestamps, and it's probably looking much more professional and better than what I did before, and then I can just hit on save. So if we we're to take a look at that video and what it looks like, I'm just going to bring this on down. Now what's going to happen is you can take a look at the video, and I still have all of my timestamps throughout the video. I can take a look at more, and then here is everything that's that brand new summary that we used and then here is all of the timestamps so let me know if you guys like this version better than what i was doing from before it was mostly just in a little list and now it is categorized again writing assist is crazy and now for the honorable mention before we get to feature number one and this is going to be the camera so the camera has been updated it's been overhauled this right here you can see is the newer grid and the leveling this is where you can see if is it, is it going to be a level shot are you making it too high or too low how is the angle of it so you can see these little lines the little white lines are changing green and that just means that you are not at like a level shot so you also have the one that is being tilted also what's nice about it is when you get closer to an object this is when you have your little focus enhancer icon so if you want to take a more macro shot you can so you can turn it on and off super easy as long as you're getting closer to a subject and then it depends on which lens that you're taking a picture with so that made it super simple and then now all of your settings is over here on the bottom right hand side rather than everything being on the very top it's going to be on the very bottom so that one the camera is honorable mention with everything now has been improved and overhauled and now for the top of the list what made it number one is on the lock screen and that is called now bar it is basically a pill widget that is stackable on the very bottom so anything that you're actually already doing right now that's running in the background will be able to show up on the bottom such as timers and stopwatches your music if it's youtube and there's a lot of things you're able to do if you want to take a look at some of these settings that's a part of this once you go inside of the settings up over here you'll take a look at your lock screen and it's called this right here now bar now somehow i missed this on my video yesterday which was everything new in the video i had it written down but it was in between a few other things underneath the category of lock screen and somehow my eyes skipped over so here is some of the applications that'll work on the very bottom your clock the voice recorder emergency sharing your samsung health like if you're working out or if you're doing a routine such as you know push-ups or doing the bench or running you have interpreter you have maps samsung notes and bixby i will state that a couple of these will still need to have an update for them for them to actually work on the very bottom so i think samsung health is one of those that needs to have an update uh, maybe even maps as well so those will actually be probably coming within the next coming days since beta was just launched so my live notifications, you can see here music, I have modes and routines. And so some of the stuff that you're able to do here is let's say that as of right now, let's go inside of, uh, you know what, let's go inside of the voice recorder. And then I hit on this little record button. So now what's going to happen is when I go inside of my lock screen and I take a look at this right over here, if I want to have this kind of running in the background, I'm in class or whatever, I have my little pill right there and I'm still able to switch between whatever I have going on. So if this is a timer or stopwatch, I'd be able to interact with that. If I want this to be finished, I just basically hit on pause and that's it. You can actually tap there as well. You can expand it and you can completely just stop it. So you'll have to probably unlock your phone in order for it to be stopped. Um, but when you take a look at a lot of the other stuff that you're able to do, you don't actually have to unlock your phone to play pause and do all that good stuff. So right now I'm actually playing this song currently. And one of the cool things that I can do here is if I tap there, it's going to expand it. And now you have a larger view of whatever you are doing. So not only can you go inside of here and you can play and pause it, you can skip it, you can go back. If you tap here, this is where you can do like the thumbs up. You can change your media output. And also check this out too. If I was to open up my Galaxy Buds over here. So now that we got the Galaxy Buds taken out and it's all connected, one of the really nice things is that when you expand this out, you have everything right here, even your media output, but you also have your settings for the buds themselves so if i was to tap on those little bud that little bud icon this is where i can see 
the battery life of it. I can also change the, the volume of it. I have the off, the ambient sound, adaptive, the active noise canceling, but those will actually work when I actually have them with inside of you know my ears. This is where, when it comes down to some of my, my audio settings, I can either turn on or off the 360 audio. Here is my equalizer, so I can switch my equalizer right here from the lock screen. So you got like bass boost, I got my, my balanced, and then also have dynamic, which I like the dy dynamic option a little bit better. You also have loudness normalization as well. If you go inside of details, this is where you have to unlock it because now you're actually getting into the phone, getting into more settings and all that good stuff. So it's really nice of what you're able to do with this pill. Again, you're able to use this with a bunch of other different applications and it's all within inside of that settings. But just remember a few of them may still need to have updates for them to actually show up on the bottom. I tried Samsung Health earlier today with a workout and with a bench and, and push-ups and stuff, and it wasn't actually showing up on the bottom, but I think that that's going to come really soon anyways. So that right there is the top five features of Samsung One UI 7 Beta. Let me know if you guys like this setup of video where I don't only just talk about the great things at the beginning and then it kind of dies off. I saved the best for last. It looks like a, and sounds like a regular traditional top five. I kind of enjoyed it and threw in an honorable mention. Hopefully you guys have appreciated this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe on the very bottom left-hand side. And if you like this video, then more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later. Oh,